Good day, folks. I'd like to take this time to show you a schematic of a project I'm working on the side here. I actually showed you guys a few videos earlier. The beginning of it, it was basically a flyback controller. Um, and a lot of people seem to ask a lot of questions with the various cap dump circuits and methods that I presented over the months. And uh, I figured out a new way, well, not necessarily a new way, but an alternative method to using the back EMF to actually power the cap dump device. Remember when I say and I emphasize all the time it's great to be creative with your controllers but the more parts the more creative you get the more current we need and a lot of people seem to not understand that including some of the people who are building these and selling them as kits. Uh, it might be a fancy controller but you know it seems like they completely didn't understand the part of trying to also keep the current minimal and therefore people who are trying to achieve effects of over unity or anything like it they don't see it because of course your circuit is nice is fancy is great is digital it's got integrated circuits however fancy you want to get with it it's got transistors but the problem is you're using current for that it goes completely against the principle that I'm trying to push here but with that said, if you know what you're doing and you're clever and you can figure out mechanisms and you can enhance your controllers at, without the sacrifice of using more current, then there's the power to you. So this is a new method that I figured out to uh, recycle essentially the back EMF of a circuit that's essentially wasted. So instead of using a, a controller basically to use the power traditionally from the main input, we're going to recycle some of the back EMF energy that's already wasted in the circuit anyway. So my logic to this is why, let's say if we want to create a, a fancier, which is nice to have a bit more control on a cap dump circuit, but without the expense of using more input current, instead we're going to use the current that's already wasted in the system that we wouldn't be using anyway. So it's there as a parasitic back EMF. So um, we will use that. And if you don't believe me, um, for example, take your high voltage module from eBay. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about because a lot of people have been telling me as well, especially the new people who have just found my channel, they get confused about when I make references to past projects if I don't give you the details. So my apologies for that. Sometimes I'm still stuck in my mind where I only have the 25 subscribers I had basically in the beginning of winter when I started. So it's very great that uh, there's more of a following here, but I keep forgetting and I and it's my apologies for that, you know, and for those who have been following me for a while, I don't want to sound like I'm patronizing you with, oh, geez, he's going to basic electronics. How boring. I'm simply trying to accommodate to the increasing crowd that I, I'm getting here, which is a good thing to uh, promote the ideas here. So what I'm talking about here, if you don't know what I'm talking about, is these high voltage modules that I was recommending instead of, um, as an alternative to experimenting with here, instead of building all your back EMF coils, which some people are having a hard time with, I've presented some schematics using these units you can get on eBay. They're high voltage modules just for a few dollars. And they only require about 1.5 volt drive to work optimally and will work as low as like 0.5 or 0.6. And they can use very, very little current as demonstrated in some of my previous experiments. But they could also put out quite a punch. So I'll just give you a demonstration real quick. Here's a half dead 1.5 volt battery and here's the pulse module here. And when I put the battery in there, this model here, they have all shapes and sizes. This is like the 250,000 volt version. Just got to get the battery here. I can do it with my hand. It's a little tricky. See? But this is the spark. I'm going to put it behind my shirt so you can see it. So it's about 250,000 volts just from this little battery. So very efficient device, as you can see. And what this basically is, and people were accusing me previously like I was trying to hide something because they're saying, you know, what's inside the magic box. And folks, I'm sorry if that was the impression you were getting. There's no magic in this box. It's, it's actually a very typical flyback oscillator on a little transistor. It's a free-running oscillator. 
and it's simply got a voltage capacitor diode multiplier stage. Anyhow, just a voltage multiplier with a flyback oscillator. And um, I could actually show you. You can build these yourselves. They actually sell the parts individually. But why bother when, you know, if this is all you want to do, it's a lot easier to buy it pre-made. You know, they have it molded and everything. But essentially, if you take this apart, you're going to find a little flyback transformer. This is rated at about 20,000 volts. And you've got your three sides here for your transistor feedback on this side here. And then the high voltage, the red one output and then they just put the um, multiplier stage from that point on and that's how you get all in here so I was essentially building my own version of this to have better control and this is where I came up with the better cap dump system so I'm just going to show you that and explain to you and this is very much folks like a, a kind of like a Bedini schematic you know where a typical engineer will look at this right from the start and say it's wired all wrong it's not going to work but this is totally outside the box creative thinking and I will explain to you how it works. So I'm going to use my cursor here as a pointer. So this part here in the schematic here basically represents what would be inside that high voltage pulse module I show you. Here's the transformer here, here's your transistor and this is your, your, your bias resistor here and that creates the oscillations and it goes down here and this could be considered you know your voltage multiplier stage over here there'd be multiple of this I, I skipped that part to, to simplify the schematic but right here would be the high voltage output module now people are trying to use this to charge up capacitors at higher voltage very quickly and dump them into their load or battery or whatever it is so right over here is the cap here that we're charging we want to dump okay so what I reasoned is, like I was saying earlier, I wanted to build a fancier cap dump, but the problem is it uses a little bit more current, but to make it so that it doesn't draw current output from the primary source over here, I take advantage of the parasitic back EMF that this coil produces back in the system. Believe it or not, this little transformer here, when you put a battery on this side here, and you put a diode, on the negative side while it operates I mean don't take my word for it try it for yourself I know it says and it doesn't say this in the specifications you just gotta experiment and find out there will be anywhere from 5 to 10 volts it's parasitic and it's irrelevant and in most electronic devices it's actually filtered out but my point is there is a back EMF if you want to call it the primary back EMF I don't know what you want to call it but it's there but again very very little current and much less than what your output the high voltage output is so the issue with that is even though you're getting let's say 5 to 10 volts there's not enough oomph to it to really run an external controller as is so this is where in the schematic I get creative and I take this back EMF to charge a primary capacitor here which powers a secondary flyback oscillator with those parts I show you. We have a completely separate oscillator here, which will create its own high voltage source, which charges its own high voltage capacitor here. So at the output you see right here through the bridge rectifier charges this capacitor. This is its own power supply, which actually feeds the DC for a, a stable multivibrator using typical parts here. So again, these are very generic values. Ignore these resistors and capacitive values, but the schematic for the multivibrator is fine. It's just, the thing is, this will vary depending on your input and output voltages. But the thing is, if you want to experiment with specific duty cycles and frequencies, there's a million schematics of this. You just have to plug in your values here and you'll get the actual frequency and duty cycle you want. This is great because it offers us a quote-unquote analog but better way to control the cap dump here and is essentially isolated because right here you see there's where the isolation happens in this transformer feeding its own it's essentially its high frequency DC step up power supply is what it is and it's just enough to power this a stable multi vibrator which with the right values we want whichever we want uh, whatever you want to try with try some some uh, common values to 
to experiment with that will obviously depend on the rate that you're you're going to have to experiment how fast your capacitor charges and then make a determination with the values for here but my point is this is easy to manipulate and it allows us to control our dump which is actually the trigger you know through one of the um, outputs of the ace table vibrator here which triggers the base of a of a transistor just as a regular switch and this is our main output here which would be to your load or your battery which is the cap dump output over here of your charge high voltage now essentially what we're doing here is again I'm being clever and I'm using the parasitic back EMF of the system to trigger a high voltage high frequency oscillator which powers another DC stage just enough to work our ACE table multi-vibrator here which triggers at our desired rate the cap dump here which outputs so I'm taking advantage of everything and by doing this like I said it's current that in power we'd be wasting anyways in the system so why not use it instead of adding an additional drain so it's just taking advantage recycling making the whole thing more efficient and people were having problems with the cap dump because the neon over time polarizes I know that's an issue then they try adding the Zener diode method with transistors and that required additional circuitry which presented an additional load and they just weren't getting the same results so this is a alternate method that you can try and experiment with and I'm looking forward to your comments and I hope this clarifies maybe some uh, some of the questions from the new uh, folks around here that are watching and um, anyways have yourselves a great day